Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope it's all uh, great and fantastic and wonderful. Everything here is pretty darn good. Related to yesterday's topic about, you know, being able to spend money, um, I've been interested lately um, into doing more, I guess, I've been, I've been wanting to buy a hand plane. I've been wanting to buy a hand plane for a while because I've never owned one. I mean, I have hand planes, but I have like $20 low angle jack plane or low angle block planes for doing like chamfer work and stuff. But I've never had like a smoothing plane or a jack plane or anything like that. And there's been a lot of times where I've needed them. Uh, for instance, uh, when I made the desktop for M's desk, I used... Um, rough sawn cherry that I milled here in the shop and I used a biscuit joiner to help keep those boards aligned but it's never perfect there's always gaps and I ended up spending a lot of time with a belt sander trying to get that desktop flat it's got undulations so if you wave your hand on it you know it feels funny uh, but a, a, a plane would have made that a much better experience a much nicer experience for me the woodworker and uh, when I did my kid's desk recently, or desk, side desk recently, same situation. I had to glue a couple of, of pine panels together, and a plane would have been really nice for that. Or, I have a jointer, but it's a little 4-inch jointer, like Harbor Freight, old style. It works okay, um, but it, I need to set it up again. I don't think I have it set up quite right. It, it tends to leave... It tends not to get great glue joints. So it'd be really nice to put some boards, you know, small panels type glue ups in my in my vise and plane. So for a long time, I've had like the Tay Tools number four jet or number four smoothing plane on my Amazon wish list um, because it seemed like it was a decent value for a sub hundred dollar plane and it got good reviews. Um, but like anything, well, not anything, that's not true. Like a lot of things, I believe that buying a better plane is worth the investment. And I've I've heard it said, uh, it's kind of like playing guitar. If you play, if you try to learn to play on a cheap guitar, you'll get super frustrated because the guitar is not performing well, and you're not good enough to know that the guitar is holding you back. Same thing with a hand plane. If you buy a cheap one that that's not well put together, that's not the materials aren't great, it's going to chatter, it's going to do weird stuff, and you're going to think it's your technique when it's not. It's just a bad plane. Um, and so maybe spending more money on a better plane is is a way of like uh, paying for performance. And, and maybe if you worked with that cheaper plane, you would be a better hand planer. I don't know. But the point is, based on you know talking about money yesterday... I actually can just go buy a plane right now if I wanted to. And I've been thinking about it. I just don't know which one to buy, right? Uh, I don't want to spend Lee Valley money. But at the same time, I'm looking at things like Wood River or Bench Dogs. And I don't know enough. I mean, I watch a lot of YouTubers who do a lot of plane setup videos and who have done a lot of reviews. I've seen the reviews for all the various planes out there. Um... I just don't know which one to get. So I'm curious to know if any of you have like Wood River or Bench Dogs or even Lee Valley, I guess. I, I'm not going to spend Bridge City Tool Works kind of money on a plane. That's not going to happen. Um, and the, the reason I've considered Bench Dogs is because I can get it on Amazon. Uh, whereas Wood River, I have to go to Woodcraft and get it. Um, which is fine. I mean, but I have Amazon Prime, so... Anyway, the point is, uh, do you have a lot of experience with hand tools? Because I don't. Uh, when I was a kid, my dad had a pretty basic set of hand tools. I, my dad has a, like an old Stanley plane. I'm pretty sure. He used to. I think it was my grandfather's. And I should probably go get it from him and try to fix it and make it usable. Uh, but it, I, I remember it had a split handle. I think a piece of it was missing, so I'd have to find a new handle for it. it you know, I, I don't know if it's worth trying to rescue that, or should I just buy a modern plane that's got a you know flip cap and all that sort of stuff. But when I grew up, 
Um, I was allowed to use jigsaws. I was allowed to use hand saws. Uh, this is my grandfather's hand saw. I did a lot of stuff with a hand saw as a kid. Uh, I built a lot of tree houses with a hand saw and a hammer. <laughs> I built a lot of uh, boxes and stuff with hand tools because I wasn't, we didn't have a table saw until I was in high school. And then we got one of those really tiny, like aluminum, really inexpensive, like sub hundred dollar table saws. And I was scared to death of that thing. So I didn't use it. I was allowed to use a jigsaw or a uh, saber saw, as we called it back then. Um, and so I, I just never got into trying to do the nicer stuff. Uh, you know, I could cut some boards fairly nicely and, you know, nail them or glue them together. Or now I, you know, pocket join them or whatever. Um, dowel joints or screw joints with plugs. But I've never really, until I made M's desk, that's not true. I have made, I, I definitely have made some other better, finer furniture, but not stuff where I needed a, you know, a nice plane or anything like that. And I honestly don't know how much I'll use it. That's part of the other reason that's like, to spend $250 on a jack plane, because I think that it would be a useful tool when I need it, uh, that also is a little bit scary to me. That's a, that's a lot of money. That's a big ask for me. Uh, so I'm just looking for some advice, I guess, uh, because I don't know, I don't know what's going to be best for me. Also, I love these clamps. This is the Bessie Revo K body, but man, when you get glue in these little hoodads where the clamp grabs, don't do that. It's a pain in the butt. <laughs> So anyway, uh, let me know if you have any experience with hand planes and um, where I should probably, you know, where I should put my bucks because I think that would be something that I would, uh, it, it's a, one of those tools that if I had it, I would use it more, uh, probably more than I'm imagining I would. I would probably find excuses to use it. Uh, also, like, I have a good sharpening setup and stuff, which is something that my dad, I've used that hand plane that's in my dad's house, but he didn't know how to set it up, neither did I. I know those things now. And I have the ability to take care of it, you know, so. Uh, anyway. Okay. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends, wonderful people. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should know to sound smart is irremediable. It is an adjective meaning impossible to cure or remedy. Sylvia's outdated concept of, of KOTOR is completely irremediable. Irremediable. I-R-R-E-M-E-D-I-A-B-L-E. -E -E. Um... We never, you know, remedial is not a term that I hear a lot in the civilian world. We talked about remedial PT in the, in the Marines a lot. For people who couldn't pass a fitness test, we have to go to remedial. Uh, but I don't hear that word a lot in, um, in the private sector.